is Judaism a democracy? Or rather, is Judaism completely at odds with democracy and you cannot have a religious Jewish state that is a de democratic state at the same time? That seems to be the conventional wisdom. But the conventional wisdom is wrong. And we can prove it from a very interesting verse in this morning's, or this week's, biblical portion. The portion of Ayake. Chapter 35 of the book of Exodus, verse 30. And Moses says to the children of Israel, Ru, see, plural, God has called by name Bitzalel, Ben Uri, Ben Hur, from the tribe of Judah, and has filled him with the Spirit of the Lord, with wisdom and understanding and knowledge and tremendous craftsmanship. The name Bitzalel means in the shadow of God. And to just give you an idea of how aesthetic and how important art is to the Torah, Bezalel in the shadow of God is the architect who will craft the sanctuary. And he's seen as a deeply religious personality and his task is a deeply religious task. But the one word which seems to make no sense, Ru, look, plural, see, plural. What does it mean? It's like a kind of exclamation. But what does an exclamation have to do with choosing the architect of the sanctuary? Talmud, Tractate Brachot, page 55, says as follows. Ru, see. Kara Hashem b'shem b'tzalel, the Lord called by name B'tzalel. Omalo HaKadosh Baruch Hu The Holy One, blessed be He, says to Moses. Moshe, Hagun Alecha B'tzalel, are you satisfied that B'tzalel is the right artisan? Omalo, Moses says, Ribono Shalom, the Master of the Universe, Im Lefanecha Hagun, Lefanai Lo Kol if he's the right person for you, he's certainly the right person for me. So God receives Moses' assent. Omalo, nevertheless, God says to Moses, Afal Lech emor lehim. Tell now the Jews of this choice. Halach v'yomar lehem Yisrael. Moses goes and reports to the Jewish people a question mark. Hagun alechem b'tzalel. Is b'tzalel worthy enough for you? Amrulo they say to him, If lefnei ha-kadosh baruchu lefanecha hu hagun. If he's worthy enough before God and before you, lefanecha lo kol shkein. Certainly before us. And therefore, the Talmud ordains that no important task of responsibility can be given over without the consent of the people. Democracy in the strongest way imaginable so it needed a public vote, this appointment of B'Tzalel. And as Maimonides teaches, the appointment of a king needs the consent of the people. And that's clear from the biblical discussion of a king. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, 
It's the people who come initially to Moses and say they want the king. And then Tziv says that ultimately there is no king that can rule without the people, his being, the people's choice. And in terms of appointing a king, the Sanhedrin has the power, a prophet has the power, the high priest has the power. But in the absence of all of these three, and the best ones, is the vox populi, the voice of the majority of the people. And the kings in Israel needed assent of the nation. And this is fundamentally true of every important authoritative position. It needs the assent of the people. And therefore, throughout Jewish history, public vote has been the best way of choosing the right leaders. It's not democracy, democracy alone. The democracy has to be joined to a leader that gives freedom to its people. But Judaism learns from B'Tzalel, you can never appoint anyone in a position of authority unless he has the acceptance of the people. Shabbat Shalom.